ذكرن أو أنثى anyone who does virtuous deeds be it a male or females ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن and they have faith إيمان you need two criteria good deeds and إيمان then what happens listen to the ayah فلو نحيينه حياة طيبة we will make him live a good life what did that professor hertz say do you remember what he said professor hertz you know the guy the political scientist he said when you have your freedom what's going to happen you definitely will undermine what good life didn't he say that no. quran says well here is your practice of good life there you go wear your hijab and be proud of it pray your salat and be proud of it Don't hesitate when it is the time of Salat. When I was in university, when I was, I grew up also in Canada. I was young when I, when I went there. I grew up there. When at the time of Salat came, I remember I had a class that I used to teach at the university. And the class was four hours long. Four hours long class. Yeah, it was a lab, a laboratory. It started at 12.30. It was an organic chemistry lab. You guys know organic chemistry? You know, the good old stuff? You know, wonderful, all these chemicals. You know, you see some interesting stuff from some students. You know, okay, a lady calls me once and it's like, you know, the experiment is not heating up. I'm like, plug in the heater for God's sake. Plug it in, you know. You know come on. So that class used to start at 12.30, finish at 4.30, which is exactly the window of Salat al-Dhuhr at the time, you know, in that part where we used to live in Canada. Four hours, look, 4.30 is when the sun sets. The class begins with the Salat. And if I were to stay and delay my Salat, it becomes Qaba. I was teaching that course, that class. But that's no excuse. I would go do my wudu an hour before. When the time comes, I come to the students, I explain to them the experiment and tell them I will be back in a few minutes. You guys go ahead and start preparing your reactions. I would go do my salat and then I come back. And I would not hesitate when someone actually sees me praying. Because we're proud of who we are. One day a person, a professor walks into the washroom, he sees me doing wudu. He says, did you spill some acid on yourself? Are you okay? Should I call someone? I'm whatever. I'm like, no, no, no. Don't worry, bro. It's okay. Take it easy, professor. No. He says, I'm just doing wudu. What? Wudu? What? What, what, what do you do? You wudu? What? what? It's like, no, I was like, no, no. This is how I prepare for my prayers. Oh, well, how often do you do this? Like, I you know, five times a day. Really? Well, that's impressive. You know. I said, thank you. Now, can I do my wudu? Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Assalamu alaikum. So, don't be shy. Wallah, don't be shy. Yani, this is who we are. Don't be afraid of telling people, I am a Muslim. My name is Ali. My name is Muhammad. Not Mo. Not Has. Hassan. Hassan. You know. You know. So, be proud of your identity. Be proud to pray Salat. Be proud to obey your parents. That brings you pride. I am obedient to my parents. This freedom, it's great. It's a great slogan. Freedom. Live freely. Do whatever you want. You're free. Great. But in reality, it is causing problems in relationships. It is causing problems in raising children. It is causing problems in our moral ecology. It is having an impact on the quality of our good life. So then isn't it time we actually follow the laws of Allah? You have free, you're free. Allah created you free. And Allah said, you know what? With regards to legislation, tashri', you have the freedom. Whether you want to follow me or you don't. That's your choice. I will not force you. But if you don't follow me, you will have a life of depression. You will not have a happy life. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Anyone who turns away from the dhikr of Allah, the life of Ahlul Bayt, will have a depressed life. You will not have a happy life. That's what the Quran says, not what I say. On the contrary, الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن قلوب those who believe 
and their hearts find tranquility and peace in the remembrance of Allah. Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah is where the hearts find peace and tranquility. What is the remembrance? What is the dhikr? It is the dhikr of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. It is living the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallamuhu alayhi. It is following the examples of Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayha. Following the examples of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as-salam. That's what dhikr truly means. Dhikr does not mean I listen to them and the minute I walk out of this majlis, khalas, I go, I will backbite, I will slander, I will go and shout at the people downstairs, yell at them. Come on, move out of my way. Why are you doing this? I start, what kind of akhlaq is this? Dhikr of Ahlul Bayt, it means I really live their life to the best of my ability. That's what dhikr truly means. That's why we read in Dua Kumail, Ya man ismuhu dawa wa dhikruhu shifa. The name of Allah is the medicine. And that's why Imam al-Sadiq says, we are the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.